I think it's so important that everything be accurate because you're teaching something and you don't want to make anything up. I'll give the example of another book that I wrote. It's called um, How We Crossed the West, The Adventures of Lewis and Clark. And they had several different kinds of boats that went on that journey. And so I researched them so carefully that I have the plans for all the boats and the ones that you could plan. I have William Clark's plan for the main boat that went on the journey. I have um, seen pictures of every bit of it and put it in my book. And it's upsetting to me when I see other books where they put a birch bark canoe in there because they didn't have anything to do with a birch bark canoe. So you want every button on somebody's military uniform to be correct. You want all their weapons to be correct for the period what they really would have used. If it was, whether it was a black powder rifle or a, a bow and arrow by various Indian tribes, um, that has to be correct. Um, what the different Indian tribes wore in my different books are thoroughly, thoroughly researched from um, museums that have their actual clothes from um, paintings that were done during these periods by various artists. All of that has to be correct for that year. In the book George versus George, the American Revolution is seen from both sides. That book is about George Washington and King George III. I not only had to know what they looked like, but I had to know what they looked like at certain ages. So I have huge posters that I can show people where I have every possible portrayal of George Washington on one side and every possible portrayal of King George III on the other side so that I'll have them at every age and then I can draw their faces and their hairdos and their clothes correctly for that time period. And um, Ben Franklin, the other scientist that we were briefly discussing for two seconds before, he had a great sense of humor. So I made him tiny Ben Franklin, but he still had to be accurate. And um, tiny Ben Franklin, I made him tiny so that he could jump up on top of all his many inventions and show you how they worked. And since he had such a good sense of humor, I had him doing funny things. Like on the title page, I have him turning cartwheels across a reproduction that I made myself of it's a conglomerate of his many inventions, drawings for his inventions, some of which worked and some of which didn't, by the way. But I think he would have liked being tiny Ben Franklin telling jokes inside my book because he had such a good sense of humor. Even so, everything I did about him, which is a more cartoon style than the realistic style in the other books we've talked about, everything that I did had to still be accurate. So his clothes had to still be accurate and his inventions had to still be accurate. And the um, buildings that he went into, the library and all his fire engines that he um, would have had something to do with because he wanted to stop fires in cities all over the place, um, those had to be accurate too. And so you really become quite the detective in an uncovering this and you have to do that otherwise it doesn't ring true. And it makes it more fun for kids when they can see that people in, if they were a guy in George Washington's time, the guys would have worn tights and they might have worn white wigs and they are the age of the kids that would be reading my books. Um, at the time of Ben Franklin he was an inventor. He started becoming an inventor when he was in elementary school age. And kids really relate to that. He invented, um, I'm a swimmer, he's a swimmer. Okay, so I'm into this. But he wanted to swim faster. And so he invented paddles for his hands and fins for his feet. And they worked, they made them faster, but they were made out of wood, so they were really heavy. So he invented a better way to swim fast. And what he did is something Ben Franklin would do if you think about it. He got himself a kite, because he always did love kites. And he would hold on to the kite string and lie on his back. And when the wind came up, the kite string would pull him across the water faster than ever before, even faster than the paddles and the, and the fins. So inventive guy, I try to relate my characters 
through the accuracy of the drawings that I do, but I also try to relate them in every other way I can. So if the kids can relate to him, to Ben Franklin, and to Charles Darwin because he was young and good-looking, um, they're going to like history a whole lot better.